a fresh generation, a first, thanks, a first generation college student who was born and raised in Jamaica. He's keen on improving low digital literacy in Jamaica as his passion for technology also expands to exposing youngsters from at risk or underprivileged communities to technology and shifting their focus to limitless possibilities that exist. And today, campers, we are, we are opening your horizon in terms of the limitless possibilities in terms of information technology, specifically uh, um, app building. So now I will welcome Mr. Moore. If you can give some ear clap, that would be appreciated. Mr. Moore. Hey, Randy, thanks for the introduction. Are you all hearing me? Yes. Yes, we are. All right, good, afternoon. good morning, students. How are you doing today? You can just um, turn on your mics and talk to me or, or um, talk in the chat. Don't be shy to turn on your mics, y'all. All right, here, yeah, if you don't want to talk to me, I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm fine, sir. All right, you, you don't have to call me, sir. You can just call me um, DeAndrew, okay? You all hearing me? Yes, sir, I'm hearing you. All right, cool. All right, so um, as Randy said, uh, my name is DeAndrew. I am, let me give you a little background about myself. I am from Manchester. I went to the Carter College. Anybody here from Manchester? I went to the Carter College. Yes, no. All right, so um, I started UA. This is my final semester at UA. I have one course for you. Um, how I got into software intern, into software development, actually. Um, where I'm from, I didn't even know anything about software development. Um, you know, it was the regular, you know, teacher, doctor, lawyer, engineer, stuff like that. And I had a friend of mine who was into software development. He went to NCU and uh, my family friend put me on to him. And that's where I really started um, software development. And then, uh, when I went to UA, I started to, uh, to focus more because, you know, that's my course. I study computer science. And then um, now I'm working with a company where I'm building a mobile app for them that's um, accessible on both um, Android and iOS, right? So um, I, want, I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about how you can get started and the perks of being into software development, why you should do it, and um, basically, and show you um, a few um, demos of what I've done so far. That sound good? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, 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 yeah I, I heard you, I heard you. Okay. All right. Yeah, so the opportunities that exist in software development. All right, so when persons hear, hear the term software development, when you hear the term software development, what do you think of? Let me get a little context of what of where you guys are at. Anyone, somebody? What do you say there? I'm asking when you hear the term software development, what comes to mind? Um, well, what comes to mind is is that you're building software, like you make create a new software. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And what else?
Nobody else. Okay, fine. All right, so software development is basically, um, as uh, Mr. Oh, I see a hand is there, is that a hand? Is that a hand? Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it's basically uh, yeah building um, softwares, but what 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 goes into building these softwares, and that's where uh, that that's what you call uh, programming languages. So similar to how you have different uh, languages, so for example English, Spanish, French, and you have to learn a language in order to write a paragraph, then. To write and you learn how to write paragraphs, so you can write essay and stories, and then you now you have a full book. So similar to that concept, software development is you have to learn the programming language, just like you have to learn the grammars in English, a subject verb agreement and all. You have to learn different syntax in that programming language, how it works, and then once you learn that, then you can learn, then you can build a software which would be a storybook in the analogy I gave earlier, right? So you have many, just like we have many different languages that are spoken across the world, you have many different uh, languages that are used to build uh, different things. So for example, uh, the app that, this Zoom app or WhatsApp, for example, let me use WhatsApp. WhatsApp, for example, that's built in several different languages, right? And and uh, for in order to build an app on an iOS, an, an Apple device or an Android device, they they uh, require different frameworks, different languages, and so forth. Now, um, most of you may be in a high school or well, probably high school going into university. Um, if you want to get into software development. Uh, I know it can be very, very overwhelming because there's, you'll feel that there are so many different things that you can possibly learn, but uh, you have to uh, learn to understand how to just uh, break it up into small chunks and understand that you'll never know everything because it's just not possible and you can never know every language. So for example, like if I want to build a website, right? I know this the this three basic languages that I need to, to learn. Anyone anyone ever heard of HTML or CSS before or JavaScript? Yes, sir. Right. So if I want to build a website, then I'm going to focus on learning those three languages. Even though there are many different things that I many different languages and so forth, you want to just narrow your focus to that, for example. If I want to build an app. I know the language that I should learn to use, right? So my main expertise is in most in mobile app and I dabble in web development from time to time, right? So the language that I use to build mobile apps currently is something called Flutter. Now, uh, what Flutter allows you to do is to build one time for, for both Android and iOS. Uh, why is this interesting? Because um, previously, if you wanted to build an app for an iPhone or an app for an Android device, you'd have to write two different code bases because there are two different operating systems. But there are different frameworks you can use now where you can have the opportunity to build it one time. Um, are you following so far? If there's any question, you can always stop me. If there's anything you want me to elaborate on, you can always stop me. All right, so the opportunities that exist in software development. Now, I would say that there is something here for everyone. All right, so why, why I say that is, if you are someone who is very technical, you like math, you like to solve problems, then there's something for you. If you're someone who is very creative, you like to design things, you like to build things, then there's something for you, right? So for the creative persons, 
uh, in, when it comes, it comes down to software development, it's not just about coding. It's understand, it's about a uh, user experience. So these apps that you see, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, there has there had to be a designer, a soft uh, a UI designer. UI stands for user interface, by the way. A UI designer who 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 went around, did surveys, and understand what would make people like this app more. Why? What will make people? What will make the app easier to navigate? So these designers have to use different design tools such as such as um, Illustrator. Uh, uh, I can't remember all of them right now, to basically design the different screens and so forth. So if you're looking at the process of software development, this is like the first step, designing. And then once you move on from designing, then it's all about building. So that's where the software developers come into play now, where you have a front-end developer. That person is responsible for building uh, what the designer did, building that on the on the uh, on the app, right, or the website, and then you have where you come into the back end developer now. That person is responsible for the brain behind the beauty, meaning that uh, when you open Instagram or WhatsApp, right, you see this beautiful UI. That's the work of the front end developer. But then you will see information, pictures, comments, messages, and so forth someone had to store that in a database and retrieve it so that you can get it to use. And that's the work of the backend developer. Now, I'm going to show you, uh, I was hoping I could join on my laptop, but my laptop is not giving me the service I want right now. So I'm going to show you um, an app that I've worked on in the past. I also wanted to show you a website that I've built, but I need my laptop to be working for that to be possible. And it's currently just not up at this time. So if I could just share my screen. All right, let me know if you're, if you're seeing my screen. Yes, sir. All right, great. So this is an app that I, that I did for a startup in in Kingston, you probably seen them on, on Instagram called Give Me, where they basically uh, allow you to to uh, buy things, redeem things from different stores with coupons, something similar to a Groupon, if you guys know that. So uh, this app, this was something that I did, where you can put in the code, put in a code to redeem an item when you press submit. It carries you. It carries you to to a screen which shows your gift voucher, the value of the gift, how much is available, the name, and so forth. Then you can redeem redeem um, your gift card. For example, you want to redeem five hundred thousand, and uh, that's just a short synopsis of it. There is more to it, but I could not find extended video that I had of it. It's currently on the Play Store also. So um, that's one app I've done in the past. Uh, there are several others, but I currently don't have access to them as they are, uh, as they are proprietary, proprietary code. So I can't uh, you know, go with them and, and be showing you. I'm showing you guys that, right? But yes, there are many opportunities in in this thing, and the what what I would say to you is that if you are someone who like to understand how how WhatsApp work, how different apps work, you like to solve problems, then you should definitely um, check out this 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 field, and it's also what I should say it's also very lucrative. Once you get really good in it, then you can make some serious money. So that's where I'm heading to. You have to just focus and just try to get really good in it. You can get like really good contracts with a lot of top companies. Currently my mentor, he's working at a company called WordPress and he has a really, really good contract with them. So yeah, it's very lucrative. And if money is a motivation, then 
don't let anyone stop you <laughs> once you have the drive enough to do it. Um, and I've been talking for a while now. So if you have any questions, you can just post them in the chat or you can turn on your mic. I'll drop my email in the chat if anyone wants to send me an email or to ask any further question or get any information, they can do that. So that's my email there. If you have, oh, I left out the, the G, the I spelled Gmail wrong. So any questions or, or anything from anyone? Um, no, sir. All right. Um, you, you have any other app that you could show? You could share your screen and show us a little bit of, a little bit about like, uh, that kind of give us a little mini tutorial. That's possible. All right, cool. Yes, yeah, so I was so sorry. So the issue I was having right now is that I don't know why my laptop is just not connecting so that's why I had to join from my phone. So let me try, let me try and connect again. That's why I, I tried to show you guys a little demo. Yeah, so let, me try to, let me try to connect again. So um, what would you like to see? Would you like, like to see code or you want to see uh, more, more um, apps that I've built? Apps that you build. Maybe both. Yeah, because um, you, have a, you, have a, you have some time still. So you could probably show us both. A little bit of code because okay. the students have been doing um, a little bit of online game coding. Okay. With them. Okay. So they have a little idea. So I think it will be nice to see what it looks like in, in real life. Okay, cool. Let me see if Zoom, if Zoom will work this time. All right, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. All right, so yeah, so I'm going to take, I, I got it up on my laptop. Great, so let me share my screen. All right, what are you seeing on my screen? Oh, um, some gibberish? Some coding. We are seeing, sir, um, I think Java code. And I think it's a website. Okay. I think it's a website. All right. Yes, you are right, Shanice. All right. So what this is, um, this is simple HTML. So um, in order to build a website, this is the first thing, or typically the first thing you learn at a coding workshop most time is um, HTML and CSS because it's one of the easiest things to understand. Right? So what HTML is, it's basically a markup language that, that you use to build websites. 
and CSS. This is CSS and CSS is you use a site. So if you're supposed to just have plain HTML on a website, it will look very boring. But with CSS, you can add colors and add a variety of different things. So this code here um, gives you outputs to, to this. So if you run the code, uh, this is what you'll get. So let me just um, uh, show you, let me just read it. So if I split my screen, split my screen, right. So, good. So, uh, right here, uh, did, 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 did anyone know no HTML? Anyone here familiar with any little bit of HTML? Um, I me I followed a tutorial once. Okay, on so let me ask you a question. You know what an H one tag is the H one tag. I think it's for um text, and I think it's like one of the larger ones. Right, right, that's correct. Sorry. That's correct. So, yes, yeah, so this is an H1 tag. So, as you can see, uh, this here contains the Andrew Moore's blog. And this is what you're seeing. This is what you're seeing over here the Andrew Moore's blog. So, if I was supposed to change this to H6, then H6 is a smaller type font. So if I was supposed to save this to H6, save. And this automatically um, refreshes. It goes to a smaller uh, type font. And then now, right. So this image right here, uh, let me find that image. Oh, before I get to the image, uh, this code down here, you only live once. This is closed in a paragraph tab, right? So the paragraph tab allows you to basically, as the name stands, it's a paragraph, so words are smaller. So the, the thing is that with, with coding, they try to to put things that, to, to make things very easy to understand because when you're writing, you, you write a paragraph with smaller font and the type in larger fonts. So it only makes sense that this P gives you a smaller font, right? So uh, let's move down. Let's move down to this part of it. How to be creative in finding internships, right? So you'll see this here is a H2 tag right here. And you'll notice that it's in green. Now, how did we get that in green? That's the work of the CSS, right? So in order to link, in order, how does CSS knows, how does CSS knows um, which tag to style? Can anybody tell me that? How does CSS knows which element on the page to apply a color to? Does anyone know that? <laughs> All right, I think that as a no. So what you, so you have these things called classes or IDs. So you can simply create uh, a class. So what you do is you're, you're, you're attaching a class to this H2 tag, right? So, all right, let me give an analogy first. <laughs> you have, your mother has two children and she has to name you guys, name you John and Mary. When she wants John, John has a name. When she wants Mary, Mary has a name. So if she wants John to do something for her, she calls John. So that's the, that's the basic concept. So the element has a name and it's called blog title. Now, when the CSS wants to do something with blog title, it simply calls that name blog title 
and this is the syntax for it. It's called, it calls it with a dot separator, a full stop, and the name of the class block title, and then the style is applied. So this block title class in CSS has different properties, and one such property, or two such properties are font size and color. So if you call font size, you can set how large you want it to be. And if you call color, you can set the hex code of it. Now, if I wanted to change this to blue, I would simply have to uh, do this. Uh, I don't know these hex code by memory because it makes no sense to learn them. But if I Google hex color of blue, That's zero 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 ff. So if I copy this hex color blue and save this CSS, then you see over here this color changed to blue. As well as I could have simply just typed in the color blue or red, and it changes to red. Right now, now I have it back to green. So let's go further down into the website. So uh, let's jump to right here. So we see this um, faint, faint text September 30th, 2020 by the Andrew Moore. So where is that? That is that so 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 how you understand it, a website is usually a website is built from top down. So typically it's it's built in the same order that you see it layout on the screen. So if you see how to be creative in finding tech internships, then typically what what is next under it will follow the same thing in the code base. So we see here is a class and Remember how I, how I was giving you the example of if your mom wants to call John versus Mary, right? So this class here has the name of date, date dash author. So this is this, this is the name of this element. And in order to get this to gray, the CSS just has to call date or date author and set the color of this text to gray, right? And then now, and now we see an image. So um, this is an image tag. And this image tag, this image, in this case, I use an ID instead of a class. They're similarly, they're very similar in, in use case, but if you get very technical, then you'll 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 find that find a proper use case for them. But for now, just work with it as they're the same thing, right? So uh, this image has an ID called unsplash. And this unsplash right here, unsplash, right? This is it. And now we can style the image. So how do we get this image to show? What we had to do was to place this image inside, inside the project folder. So what we do is we place this image inside the project directory and then we can reference it. But uh, this image did not just come like, didn't just come in this size. So let, let me just do something, for example, if I was supposed to take out the ID, right? Then this image would be massive and everything will not uh, this will just look very nasty, right? So what the I, what adding, what adding um, the name to the image allows us to do is we're able to call the other in this system and apply our own styling to it. So here I set the width I want it to be, the height I want the image to be, and I also wanted it to have a little curved edge, right? So um, the curved edge that you see here is the attribute of the border radius. So uh, these are just different CSS properties that you can use. 
and I wanted it to, to be to be on the right, meaning on the right side of this text that you'll see right here. So that's what this float right does. And if we continue going down through going through this website, let me see what else is important, what else I haven't touched on yet. Right, so these links. Right, so this link, if I click on this, hopefully it, it carries me to my Instagram page, right? Okay, so this is working. All right, so how did I get this now? So let's jump to the social media section of this website. Okay, so if we're, now I'm at the social media section, as you'll see, let me show you, it's right here, line one, 107, which I just highlighted. And you'll see social media, and it's in green, and that's simply because I added a name to it, and I call it in the CSS. Now, just like how I taught you guys about um, H3 tags, paragraph tags, and so forth, you have uh, something called UL tags and LI tags. Now these are basically list tags. So if you want to create a list of items, you can make use of the UL tag and the LI tag, right? And now this UL tag um, composes of different uh, composes of different list items. So the UL stand for, stand for the list and LI stand for the list items. Now in the list item, what I can add is a link. And a link is, to, in order to add a link, you need to use a, an A tag. And I know there are, these are all different type of tags, tags, but I mean, sometimes I don't even remember them. It's just a Google search because honestly, it's like after a while you get used to it, but if you don't know it by heart, that's not a problem. You can simply Google and you'll find it. So this A tag, if I, this A tag, A trick, this is just part of the syntax. What I do here now is put in the link to my, to my Instagram or my Twitter or whatever I want to link it to, right? And then I just put the, the name that I want to display. So right here, you'll see me add uh, Twitter, uh, my Twitter handle, Twitter link, and I'll just put Twitter right here and so on and so forth. And then I, right. So now, uh, so I know, Another way that, that you can go about styling things. And so for this for this website, I only had these one, two, three, and these down here as, as links, right? So if uh, if on a page you know that you if on a page you know that you want to style all the links the same way, then you don't necessarily need to add a name to them like I did before for the different for the H1, for example. Uh, what you can do is just simply call the A tag right here and it will show uh, and, and it will add the styling to every A tag. So I, I call the A tag right here and I apply this color styling and I apply it to everything right here. I was supposed to, to say A class equal Instagram, if I was supposed to, if I say I wanted to, I wanted the Instagram tag to look different from the rest. And I added a class, a class Instagram. And then I went over to style and I did something like this, that Instagram. And then I said, well, uh, in what's, what's Instagram color? Purple. And if I do purple and I save this, then you see it changes, it changed the color from Instagram, from blue to purple for Instagram. So 
I mean, it's really, it's really like if you want to get into this thing, learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is one of the easiest way you can do that. And let me just uh, give you some references. So one of the best that you can use are W3 schools. Right, everything. Like once you get, uh, all you have to do is just type in, just go under the three schools, and you'll see everything. So let me just copy and paste it in the in the chat. Uh, where is the chat? Where is the chat? All right. Can you send the link at the end of the class to make website? Uh, yes, Alexandra, Alexandra, my God. All right, so this is one simple site to learn. And let me just go on and find you a good YouTube, um, a good YouTube um, link that YouTube channel that you can use. <laughs> So, all right, so if you go on to this to to traversy um, channel, you'll see it has a whole bunch of things right here. HTML crash course for beginners. So this is, so if you want to learn to build a website, these three right here are what you should watch. This HTML crash course for beginners, this is basically showing you how to do this, about different tags. The CSS crash course is basically showing you how to style things like this. The JavaScript crash course, well, this is not in this current project, but what JavaScript does, it basically, um, basically allows you to interact with the website. So it's like, oh, I can click on these things or submit a form. That's the work of JavaScript. So learning these three will help you to, to will help you to do the design, and then learning JavaScript now will help you to make the site interactive. So once you get these three things out of the way, then you can start building your own website. Let me see if there was any more anything else in the chat. Right, so there's nothing else in the chat. All right. And let me, what else, what else could I show you? Uh, currently, I could show you a mobile app, but currently I don't have it set up on this computer. Um, So yeah, so basically, uh, basically, uh, this is just a quick, quick crash course to, to web, to web development. I mean, it's a way more, com it, it, it has way more content than this. Uh, I would need several, <laughs> several, uh, several sessions to get into it, into more detail with you guys. But this is a really, this is a quick. Um, quick crash course and how you can get started with it. Let me see if I have any, any more content on this computer. All right, I suppose to have this stick up to the one. Um, Project was this. Project one. Okay. So what I'm going, what I can also show you is, um, 
this tic tac to a game that I built. Okay, hold on. So let me see if this is coming. Is this will come up because I got this far for from a long time ago. <laughs> okay. So this is a this is a tic tac toe game. Move over your mouse, and if you click X. So basically like, like a two person player game. So, you know, you play X, the next person plays O, then you play X again, next person plays. Let's say the person is dumb at this game and don't know that they should put the O right here. And they put their O here. And I put my X here, then you won. Uh, it should have showed you a little notification. Yeah, can we that play that? Won. What was that? Can we do that? I'm not hearing you. Can we do that, sir? Oh, yes, you can. Yeah, you can do that. Um, but you currently can't play this game right now because it's hosted on my local computer. In order to, in order for you to be able to play it, I would have to put it on a server. So you guys can have access to it. It's just on my local local server right now. But um, but you can surely build this. Um, there's even a tutorial on YouTube how to build it. Let me just go on it. YouTube how to build a TikTok game. TikTok game. Let me just copy and paste this. So if you follow this tutorial and I'd advise, I'd advise you before you even before you jump into this tutorial. Uh, someone has on their mic. Uh-uh. Uh, someone, who is that? Can you mute your mic, please? Yeah. Adam, could you possibly mute your mic, please? Yeah. So, so as I was saying, no, you can sim you can follow the simple tutorial to build it, but uh, what I would suggest you do first is go through the, the tutorials that I showed you first on the Traverse site because this one is going to be a little bit complex and you need to have the prior knowledge to understand what understand what he's going to do to build this game, right? And if we click new game, it should refresh and start over again. And this is the code for it. So the reason I said it's going to be a little bit complex is because most of this I didn't write in HTML. Most of it, most of it, I I wanted to learn JavaScript more, so most of it I wrote in JavaScript. And this is what what JavaScript looks like. It's it's a little bit more complicated than HTML and CSS. So it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. But once you get the hang of it, then you'll be fine. So, so yeah, I'm to go through the tutorials that I sent you first, and then you can watch watch this video, and uh, and build your own TikTok game. And one thing I like about about um this field is that everything that you want to do, it's 
it's on the internet and it's for free. Like you don't need to everything that you want to do, almost everything you want to learn, it's for free and it's available. Like with just uh, YouTube or Google search, but only but all you just need is just a little bit of exposure. And that's why I'm glad that Lenika is having this camp so that you guys can, you know, broaden your horizon and, and more exposed to uh, different, different career fields, different career paths and so forth. So, yeah, that's, that's basically that. So as I said, um, if you want, if you want to talk to me at length or if you want to come into this field, I think I'll post my, my email in the chat. You can just send me an email, I'll respond. And if you want advice or if you want resources, things that you can use to help you um, accomplish any task, then you can just send me an email and I'll help you look for them or I'll guide you along the way and, and, and share different resources that you can use to get the task done. So, that's what I have for now. If there's no other questions, are there any other uh, questions or feedback? Hi, hi, Andrew. Hi. Thanks so much for the session. I personally very much hey. enjoyed it. Hi. Okay. Um, because Thanks, I um, myself, I hope to learn, well, I'm, I'm one of the coordinators and I'm hoping to learn, you know, well, to try to develop my own site soon. So I really appreciate um, this session. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it will, it will start to build the students' interest in software engineering and just, you know, app building, because it, that is definitely something that is so common now. And I think it's something that they definitely need to get their interest up in, you know, into, into improving that. So thank you so much for your session. Yeah, no problem, no problem at all. You can always reach out to me for anything. And also, um, if anyone here, if anyone um, on this call has, say, like a company, um, something that you can use to to, to fast track uh, your website building is, some, is this tool, this website builder called WordPress. You know, I don't know if you guys have heard of WordPress before, but what WordPress, WordPress allows you to do is it basically allows you to skip out all the, the HTML and CSS, CSS I showed you earlier on and just, um, let me go on my site and just show you what, exactly what I mean. All right, all right. All right, well, it's not coming up. Take a bite. Great. So uh, what I was saying was that um, if like you're someone on this call and you're thinking of starting a business or you already have a business and want a website for your company, um, you can use this um, this website builder called uh, WordPress. And what it basically allows you to do is to skip out the, the manual code that I was showing you if you want something simple. So all of this that you see here, I did not code this. What it basically allowed me to do is it, it already comes, um, the, the build already comes pre-built with themes that I can choose different um, already coded websites from. And all I need to do is just apply the theme that I want to my um, domain name. And then I can basically go in there and add these details that I want. So 
if you are just someone that uh, you want to focus, well, the, 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 uh, what should I say? The pros of WordPress is that if you want to just focus on your business, your business rather than having to do business plus developer work, this website really allows you to, this, this, um, this tool really allows you to, to, to do that. It takes away the nitty gritty, basically. So you can um, so you can build your website quicker and focus more on your businesses. But if uh, you're someone who uh, basically software development is going to be your bread and butter, then uh, then you should definitely learn how to do the, the, the nitty gritty part of things. All right, so I think that's 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 the yeah, Andrew. Device. What device do you use? That looking like is it a MacBook or what type of device? Oh, this is um, this is this is a Linux Linux operating system. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. But yes, I, I have. On the on what device? Have, okay. Oh, on an HP computer. Oh, okay, good. I have a HP computer because I was looking, I was like, this doesn't look like Windows at all. So, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. So, basically, um, uh, with, with basically, you can, you can split your hard drive and then you can install a different operating system on it. Now, the thing with Linux is that what Linux, well, this specific version is Ubuntu. What it allows you to do is a lot, for a lot of um, development work that I do, I need to be able to uh, to get past the Microsoft or the Windows um, annoying system. So it basically allows me to to, to to do all of that. So so it makes development easier for me. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks so much for your session, DeAndrew. Um, students, you have any questions for, for DeAndrew before he goes? I don't want it to be that as he goes, you know, you all, we all have, have more questions. So ask him your questions, ask him if you're well, you anything you need Linux help. operating system. Yeah, sorry about that. All right, so any more questions or, or anything? How do you get a Linux operating system? Oh, all right, yes, you know, <laughs> that's something that, you know, like when they say don't try this at home, that's something that you could do and, and mash up your computer, basically. So if you are, if, 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 if you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, I wouldn't advise you to do it. Because currently at this stage, you don't necessarily need to, to get Linux on your computer, right? But as you advance, then you might find a use case for it. But you can YouTube it and there, there are always tutorials on how to set it up. But as I, as I say, um, don't try this on your phone. Because what will happen is if you don't need properly, when you're doing, what you're basically doing is you're, you're splitting in the hard drive in your computer and you're allocating, say you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, right? You're allocating, let's say 200 gigabyte to Linux. So when your computer turns on, it will turn on to Linux instead of Windows. And if you don't need properly, then what you'll do is you'll end up destroying that 200 gigabytes of hard drive and you'll just left with 300 gigabytes and you'll only be stuck on Windows and you can't get back that 200 gigabytes because you messed it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, any more questions? You 
Okay. All right. Well, guys, you'll have uh, Mr. Well, <laughs> I think say that don't call him Mr. Also, but the Andrews email <laughs> address. It's in the chat. It's D E A. M O O R E 07 at gmail.com. Okay, and he has an I, his IG handle is yeah, underscore yeah. drew dot dot. So, what I would suggest is that as you all, that we're going to segue into I want to start with animals in the ocean. And because I just want to show you all a little idea of what I want you to do for your presentation. And then I will allow Mr. Mr. Williams to do his session. And you all can continue. I'll post the PowerPoint, et cetera, everything of what I'll post. It's in the chat and see if you can download it of what I want you to do for your 